If you're like me, you've been spinning up lots of new services over the last couple of months or maybe even years. You've been self-hosting services like Pi-hole, FreeNAS, and maybe even Transmission. And so far, the way that you keep track of these is just a collection of bookmarks. And those work great until you need to find those URLs on another machine. But what if you can expose a dashboard for all of your home lab services? One that you could customize and stylize to your own needs and preferences. And what if some of those icons on the dashboard could bring back data to you? Well, that's exactly what the application dashboard that we're going to look at today does. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about Heimdall, an application dashboard. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you want to continue the conversation about home lab services there, we can. So let's talk about an application dashboard. So as I mentioned before, the way that I would keep track of all of my services that I'm running at home is just bookmarks or favorites. And they were just that, just favorites that I added to my browser that I kept. But as my collection grew, so did my favorites list. And most of the time when I opened up a browser, I wanted to check out some of my services and see how they were doing. So I used to do this with Chrome or Firefox and add a lot of icons to my homepage, but it was kind of tedious finding icons and making everything look nice, and it didn't really follow me wherever I went. So that's when I found this application called Heimdall. So Heimdall is an application dashboard. It allows you to create and manage shortcuts for all of your favorite services. It's a nice responsive website that has a long list of applications that are supported out of the box. It has this concept of foundation apps that pre-fill a lot of the details for you, as well as give you application icons. But then it also has this idea of enhanced apps. Enhanced apps give you the same thing as the foundation apps, but they also can connect to APIs from your services. So this will light up an icon on your dashboard with data. So this is really cool for something like Pi-hole. You can see how many queries were blocked. If you're using Plex and Tautily or Totally, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. You can see how many streams are currently running. And if you're running something like Transmission or some other torrent client, you can see the status of torrents you're downloading or uploading. So they have a really long list of foundation apps and a pretty good list of enhanced apps. And app requests are coming in every day. So how do I get this? Well, I'm going to show you. So today, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Heimdall. And we're not going to set up Heimdall in the traditional way. So we're not going to install it on a Raspberry Pi or a virtual machine or bare metal. We're going to install it using Docker and then move on to Kubernetes using something called Rancher. Now, if you need help setting up Docker, Kubernetes, and Rancher, I've got a complete tutorial that'll walk you through this step by step. It will have you up and running with Docker, Rancher, and Kubernetes in about 15 minutes. And after we get Heimdall set up, we'll walk through some of the configuration and configure some of our apps on our dashboard. So with that out of the way, let's hop right in. So we're going to go out to linuxserver.io. They manage a lot of my favorite Docker containers, so it's really easy to grab them from here. So if we go into documentation, we'll scroll down and we'll look for Heimdall. Here it is. And we'll see the Docker commands right here. So if we look at this command, we can kind of figure out what they're trying to do. It's pretty straightforward. So we'll run docker create with an argument flag of name and we'll name it Heimdall. Then we'll pass in some environment variables, so PUID and PGID. This is for permissions. Next, we're gonna pass an environment variable of TZ and give it the value of a time zone. Then we're gonna publish some ports on here. So we're gonna expose port 80 on the inside and port 80 on the outside, as well as 443 for SSL. Then we're gonna mount a volume for our config. So this is gonna to map to the containers config folder back to where we wanna store our data. So we'll choose this later. Then we're gonna say restart and let's stop. So this takes care of any errors. It's just gonna automatically restart that Docker container. And this is the Oregon image name from Docker Hub. So if we wanted to spin this up right now with Docker, we would copy and paste this command. We would tailor this for our needs, hit enter, and we'd spin it up and we'd have Heimdall running. But I'm going to show you how we can create this Kubernetes workload in Rancher and then come back to configuration. So once we're in Rancher, we'll want to go to global, we'll want to go to our cluster, and we'll want to go to the default namespace. Then we'll want to create a new workload. So let's deploy a new workload, and then we'll translate this Docker command to a Kubernetes deployment command. So we'll look right here. So the name is going to be Heimdall. Just so we'll name this Heimdall. The Docker image is going to be Linux server Heimdall. So we'll copy that, put it here. We'll keep the namespace as default. Okay, so we'll need to expose some ports. I'm going to name this one Heimdall. HTTP. And the container port is going to be 80. And I'm going to set this to 8500 because I'm already using port 80. And let's do one more for HTTPS 443. We're going to choose host port again. And let's do 8600 here. Then we'll add some environment variables. So we know one variable is TZ. 
and you'll want to put your time zone here. Mine's America slash Chicago. And then we'll want to find our user ID. So let's add a variable for PUID, and then we'll find our user ID. So once we're in our server, we'll type ID dash U, Techno Tim, and mine's 1001. And now we'll need to add our group ID. And here we'll type ID dash G, Techno Tim, for my group. And choose 1001. So next we need to set our path. So we'll want to make a folder for our Heimdall config. So let's do mkdir Heimdall. So we'll make a Heimdall folder. And in here, we'll make a config folder. And so here's the path to our Heimdall config. Copy that to our clipboard. So let's mount a volume, let's add a volume. So I'm gonna choose bind mount, a directory from the node. This is the easiest choice for me. Let's name this Heimdall. So the path on the node is on our clipboard and the mount point is right here, slash config. Okay, we'll need to change one more thing here. And that's our scaling upgrade policy. I typically choose kill all pods, then start new. Okay, we should be able to launch this now. Okay, so we can see this spinning up. Let's go into this pod. Let's look at events. And it's already running. Okay, so we should be able to go out to this IP address and here it is. So this is our Heimdall application dashboard. It looks pretty plain right now. Okay, so let's start adding some applications. So if you remember in a previous tutorial, I helped you set up PyHole using Docker and Kubernetes. Let's add that. So we'll search for the application name. We'll go down to PyHole. And so it we'll auto-populated some colors and some logos. And you'll notice at the bottom, there's the URL there. That means it's an enhanced tab. So we'll look at that in a few. But let's name this PyHole. Then we'll set the URL of where we want this launcher to go. So for me, my PyHole server is 192.168.0.4 slash admin. And I don't need to upload a file because we already have a logo. And here's the config, the optional. Let's enable this. So here we're going to paste in the URL to our PyHole server. I know it says not to paste this if it's different, but I'm going to do it anyways. And next we'll click test. And we'll see an alert here that it can communicate with the PyHole API. Okay, say okay, and let's save. And here we go. We have a first application pinned to Heimdall. And this is an enhanced application, so we can actually see real-time data coming back from the PyHole API. And we have a quick launcher to get to PyHole. Okay, so let's add another one. Let's click on this list icon here, and you'll see this update apps list. So this is gonna update the internal list of apps that Heimdall supports. You wanna click this before you add applications to get the latest updates. So we'll click that, and our app list is updated. So let's add another one. Let's add Rancher. So it is on the list, so it's a foundation app, but it's not an enhanced app because we don't see an additional configuration for an API but that's a lot better than going out and finding the icons and branding colors myself. So let's call this Rancher and let's put the URL to our Rancher server and we'll click save. So now we have two. So let's add another enhanced one so you can see more examples of how this works. So I run transmission, a BitTorrent client, and I actually seed four versions of Linux. So it's running all the time and it's seeding Linux so that the next person can get Linux. So let's tap into that transmission web UI and pull that data up front on our app dashboard. So let's add another one. Add, let's find it in the list, transmission. There we go. So I got my icons, I get some branding color. Let's call this transmission. And the URL and port is right here. Mine's 192.168.0.219 in the port of 9091. And so let's configure this optional stuff or the enhanced application. So the URL is the same. My username, TechnoTim, and my password. So this is gonna be the username and password to the web dashboard on transmission. If you're using a different torrent client, there's more settings for you to tweak, but let's test our transmission client out now. Click test. And here we go. We successfully communicated with the API. So this means that this button is gonna be enhanced as well. So okay here and save. And here you go. You can see my transmission client. I'm seeding four things. I think that's four versions of Linux and I'm not downloading anything. So let's add one more that's not on the list. Okay, let's go into our list. Let's add one more and let's call this Sophos. And we can see here that Sophos isn't on this list. We scroll down to the S's. We don't see it here, so this is just gonna be a standard app link. So let's select none, and here's the URL to my Sophos server. And so for the hex color, we get to choose the background for this logo. We can choose green, we can choose a different green, blue, pink, but I'm gonna pick this charcoal color. And now let's find an app icon or the app logo. Click upload file, and here it is right here. You wanna make sure you pin this so you see it on your dashboard. So we'll toggle pin, and let's click save. 
And there we go. Now we can get to our Sophos XG firewall. You can click this button here so you can pin more items to your dashboard. We pinned every one to our dashboard, but you could choose not to pin and then have them on this list where you can pin them. This will bring you back to the apps list. Here you can configure a username and password for your dashboard. And here you can create tags. So if you have a lot of apps and you wanna tag them with different tags and sort and filter them, you could do that here. And then here we'll see settings. So while we're in here, we can do a couple of things. First, let's change our background image. So we can choose edit, choose a file, and then we'll choose a background image. We'll click save, go back to our apps list, and there it is. So one thing I did notice is that there's a cap on the upload size for that image. I think the php.ini needs to be adjusted to expand the max upload size. So let's do that. And you can see that here, if we try to choose a different background, choose file, and if you choose one that's over two megabytes and hit save, it does nothing. So let's fix that real quick. So if you go back into your server, into your Heimdall config folder, and we cd into php, you'll see a php-local.ini. Let's edit that. So we'll want to add a line to the end of this to increase the max upload file size. So if we do upload underscore max underscore file size equals 30, that should take care of it. Then we'll need to go back into Rancher and reset this service so it gets the new configuration. So if we go back into Rancher, we go into Heimdall, and we can scale this down to zero. Let's open up the events. Okay, and we can scale back up to one. And it's running, so let's go back into Heimdall. Okay, let's go back into settings. Let's choose a background image. Let's choose that same one. Click save, and there we go. If you want a background image bigger than 30 megabytes, which is gigantic, you could apply that same configuration, but just up the upload size. So as you continue to add services to your home lab, you can continue to expand your dashboard. Here's what my current dashboard looks like. It's a nice easy way to see all of my services, and it's an added bonus for services that are enhanced. The enhanced apps give me a little bit of data to give me a clue as to what's going on with my services. And the really nice part about this is, this is a web server running inside of my Docker and Kubernetes cluster, which means I can access this from any device within my house. And since I have SSL VPN coming back into my house, I can access this from anywhere in the world. And you can see that this website is pretty responsive too. If I scale down, it scales really nice. And if I scale back up, it looks nice. So it'll look good on something like an iPhone or an Android device. And don't worry if you don't see your application listed here. Out of all of my Docker containers, this one has updates at least once a week, which I think is fantastic. It means somebody cares about this and somebody's updating it all the time. And if you don't see your application listed, they're taking requests for applications all the time. As of today, they have 88 app requests out there. Some of these are as foundation apps and some are for enhanced. So I highly recommend looking through their app request list to see if your app is listed there. And if it's not, you can just add it as a normal app within your dashboard and check this later. But don't forget to update your application list often. Don't forget to update Heimdall. So what do you think about Heimdall? Do you use an application launcher or homepage to manage all of your home lab services? Or are you still using bookmarks? I'd love to know what you're using. Let me know in the comments section below. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as a reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> what came and delivered it? Oh, this is crazy. Yeah, totally Windows 98 install. And it's starting on fire and you get paint. No way. No way. That is awesome. No way. No way. And play Doom on it. <laughs>